Hello and welcome to MMA News Real Talk. I'm your host, veteran MMA News uh, journalist and writer Sebastian Metal Martinez, and this is where I just give my unscripted, unedited thoughts on all things MMA and combat sports. So it's fight week, but we're not really going to get into breaking down UFC 239 until tomorrow, Friday, because I don't know, like Friday and fight breakdowns, I don't know, I just feel like it works a little bit better. Uh, so let's just go through some of the news stories that we've had uh, today and yesterday. Yeah, there was no episode yesterday, but it was in part because it was kind of a slow news day, and also in part because I was going to go see the new Spider-Man movie, Far From Home. I'm actually still wearing my Spider-Man shirt. Uh, for those wondering, I very much enjoyed it. Still prefer Homecoming a little bit, though, but... Uh, so either way, there was uh, there was definitely some stuff going on both yesterday and today, which we uh, which we are going to get to. Uh, first off, we can exclusively uh, inform you that uh, yeah, now retired Swedish light heavyweight and three-time title challenger Alexander Gustafsson is partnering up with the Swedish MMA promotion AK Fighting Championship uh, in part to be a, a sort of like a partner figure and um, kind of, uh, I guess you can say, a figurehead for the organization. Uh, and also for Gustafsson's own um, sports supplements, Fight Farm, which uh, they will be, yeah, uh, which is also a, a deal of a partnership with the organization. So uh, if we can just, for those of you who haven't read yet, you should obviously log in to MMAnit.com where you can read the full story with all the quotes. Uh, but I think the most, like the, the best part for me is just uh, Gustafsson's, uh, I mean, he's always been a humble guy. Uh, and he says, uh, I really hope it entices them. This is about the Gustafsson, you know, being uh, being sort of a figurehead of the organization and uh, serving as like this motivation and proof that, you know, even young upcoming Swedish fighters can make it all the way to the UFC and to the big leagues. Uh, I really hope it entices them. They see that I managed to go all the way to the top and I really hope they can find motivation uh, in all of it, in all of it, it shows it's not impossible. It's a tough business. There's tough competition, but with the right willpower, discipline, and hard work, you'll get there. It's going to be really fun to bring this fervor to be there from the other side of a cage, so to speak. And we will have more exclusive content with uh, Alexander Gustafsson coming. Uh, I guess m kind of all week. Uh, our reporter Asha Tafari has been. Uh, very, very active up in Stockholm, uh, getting some exclusive stuff with Gustafsson and from the All-Stars gym, so be sure to stay tuned. Uh, moving on, Joanna Janjajic has now been booked to face uh, Michelle Watterson, aka the Karate Hottie. And uh, this is a, a fantastic fight, in my opinion. Uh, we got uh, Joanna Janjajic, former strawweight queen, uh, ranked at number four, and we've got Michelle Watterson, a former Invicta champion, ranked at number seven. She's coming off the three straight wins. Uh, I think that this is kind of depends on what happens, uh, who wins, and all that, and obviously what happens with Jessica Andraj and Wei Li Zhang in, in China with the title fight there. But I'm kind of pretty sure that the winner here will probably get a title shot. Uh, I mean, I suppose John Jacic has a bigger uphill battle. I mean, she is coming off of a loss. She's actually lost three out of her last four fights. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure that she would get that. Then again, she was the former strawweight queen. She was close to beating Ronda Rousey's record uh, for title defenses uh, before she ran into Rose Namajunas. Uh, but I think if, if Watterson wins this fight, and especially if she gets a finish, then she's got four straight wins. And if she finished, if she finishes, then she's finished like a former champ, which you know, Injun Jacic will say what you will. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who seem to like not really like her boogie woman antics. Say what you will. Inside the cage, she was fantastic. Uh, I mean, never in boring fights. Always really high output, really high endurance, and uh, overall, I think this is this is great. Uh, a great fight. Uh, it's supposedly going to be on a UFC on ESPN 19 October 12th supposedly the main event as well and uh, it is rumored to take place in San Francisco so I think that will be a very fun fight to, to keep an eye out on and you know I barely even really want to talk about this because 
it's just it's so impossible and it's so ridiculous but let's just cross it off the list so according to steve-o yeah that's right steve-o formerly of jackass fame uh, he had a meeting with Dana White. Let's just go through the quotes here. This is from an interview with TMZ, which obviously lends even more, uh, you know, realism and reliability to it. But then again, it was a video interview, so the quotes are taken direct from Steve-O. Uh, Steve-O said, I'm sick of being overlooked for my potential as a cage fighter, all right? And with Justin Bieber trying to pick a fight with Tom Cruise, I really don't think Tom Cruise is up for it. And he claims to have spoken with UFC President Dana White. Uh, he says, as soon as I find out, I got him a van. I love the fact that Steve-O specifies that it was a van he drove. Because <laughs> I'm sure he's got all kinds of crazy shit in that van. Uh, I got him a van. I went out to Las Vegas. I had a little chat with Dana White. And he agreed that if Tom Cruise doesn't step up, someone has to fill the cage with Justin Bieber. And I'm the guy. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, A, I feel like the UFC would just lose so much, you know, legitimacy, uh, even, even making this fight. And secondly, I mean, is there that many people that want to see this fight? I mean, it's not as if Justin Bieber is a particularly good fighter. It's not as if Steve-O is a particularly good fighter. Steve-O is great at taking punishment, on the other hand. Well, I'll give him that. But, I mean, honestly, we can just pop in a Jackass DVD if we want to see that. Um, no, booking this fight, will, I mean, it, it'd be like uh, CM Punk versus Mike Jackson, but with worse technique. Yeah, can you believe that? So, no, this is not going to happen. Uh, Ombet, though, does have uh, betting lines for this fight, should it happen, with uh, Bieber at 140 and Stevo at 3.0, so three times the, the money. Uh, which is not a bad bet on Stevo. I mean, if this fight, in fact, does happen, hey, I say put that money on Stevo because you never know what he might pull out of his pocket. But yeah, I'd, let's move on from that. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Then we've got, I uh, want to be clear, but this is unconfirmed from the UFC and from the fighters themselves. But according to a report from a famed uh, MMA manager, Malki Kawa, uh, Jack Helmansson will headline UFC Copenhagen versus the killer gorilla, Jared Cannonier, uh, on uh, September 27th in Copenhagen Royal Arena. Uh, now, like I said, unconfirmed by the UFC, but, uh, it's, you know, re pretty reliable source. So, let's break this find out, uh, fight down a little bit. Uh, we've got... I mean, I feel like we've been seeing a lot of uh, Jakiel Manson recently. And, I mean, we have. He fought twice in one, in one month. Uh, one of those was on short notice, which is even more impressive, in my opinion. So, he's on a four-fight win streak. He began that by uh, TKOing Talis Latis. And for those of you who haven't seen that fight, honestly, check it out. It's one of those sports movies kind of fights where, I mean, that's the stuff just should not happen in reality. Uh, but in that fight, I mean, I think everybody who's at least reasonably knowledgeable about MMA knows that uh, uh, Talis Latis is a fantastic grappler. He is a fantastic grappler. Uh, I mean, he had a, a really great win streak in the UFC with some, uh, I remember his uh, performance winning uh, victory over Tim Boach uh, by Arm Triangle. I mean, basically, he's uh, he's mostly looked good. I mean, he has faced stiff competition as well. He lost to Michael Bisping. It was a split decision, really close fight. Uh, honestly, I just remember it being a little controversial. But I uh, uh, lost Bisping, lost to Gegard Mousasi. Uh, decision to Christoph Jotko, uh, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's a fight that Latest probably should have won, but either way. Uh, that was a fight where Helmand Sony actually, uh, one of his ribs got dislodged, uh, I even think it was in the first round. And despite him feeling tremendous pain through the entire fight, and especially in the grappling exchanges, of which there were many, 
he managed to turn that fight around, he landed in top position, and then while screaming, I guess both in pain and excitement, managed to TKO Talos Latis. Uh, it was a fantastic performance. Uh, and the names did get bigger because he did submit David Branch in just 49 seconds, the BJJ black belt, uh, with uh, Hermanson's patented... Uh, uh, Joker style guillotine and then after that of course there was the the big one the uh, the decision victory over Ronaldo Jacare Souza which was also incredible I mean those were impressive in very different ways uh, the win over Branch was impressive because of how quick it happened and how it happened uh, the fact that you know he tapped out a BJJ black belt so quickly uh, but one could also chalk it up, I suppose, a little bit to uh, Branch uh, making some tactical errors. Whereas uh, victory over Ronaldo Jacare Souza, one of the best guys in the world. I mean, he honestly, he could probably have been UFC middleweight champion a couple, like a couple years ago. I, th I mean, if you, I think if you put him up against Weidman, I mean, we saw that already. But when Weidman was champ, I think we would have seen a new champ. So beating Jacare definitely means something, and it says a lot about Hamanson's ability. So he's taking on Jared Cannonier, who's ranked a little bit lower down. He's ranked number nine. Hamanson is ranked number four. Uh, I know that a lot of people, including including Hamanson himself, was really hoping for uh, Kelvin Gastelum, but unfortunately, Gastelum will not be uh, healed up by uh, by September. Or I mean, he'll be healed up, but he won't. You know, he won't have a proper timetable that he needs. Uh, so Cannon here, he's coming off two straight TKO victories, uh, a uh, performance winning uh, TKO over David Branch, uh, where he kind of came back from a tough first round and uh, TKO'd Branch early in the second, and a uh, TKO victory via leg kick over uh, Anderson Silva. Now I guess that is probably the, uh, the biggest win for Cannon uh, but to be fair, I mean, Nobody really feels like Silva is in his prime, right? I mean, beating him now doesn't necessarily mean as, mean as much as it did when, when Weidman beat him, you know? So, the way I see it, Cannonier, he's got uh, probably slightly heavier punches. A uh, little bit more just general power in him. He's, you know, he's a former heavyweight, so he still carries a lot of that power. Uh, Halmanson, I feel, will have a speed advantage, and he has that, you know, in and out, kind of jerky, almost... In, in some ways, his, his fighting style, or his striking style, anyway, reminds me a little bit of Keith Jardine. I mean, for those of you who aren't, like, 16 years old, I'm sure the rest of you remember Keith Jardine, a.k.a. the Dean of Mean. Uh, who also had kind of, like, you couldn't really necessarily work out his, his striking pattern. And I feel that is definitely one of Hamasun's strengths because I'd say overall, he, I mean, he's he's better top game than, than striking. And the way that he sets up his takedowns uh, via that sort of weird striking, it's great. I mean, the uppercuts that he landed on, uh, on Jacare Souza were, were fantastic. I mean, when they landed, they were money. And over the course of five rounds, I uh, I do think Hamasun will outwork um, Cannonier. Uh, I think that Cannonier, his his best shot is in the first and second round uh, to catch Helmanson, but I just feel like Helmanson will put him on his back. Once he does that, I mean, he's got a suffocating top game. He's so active. He prides himself and, uh, you know, he says constantly he's got the best ground and pound in the UFC. Uh, he, you know, threw some shade at Khabib saying, like, uh, something along the lines of at least I finish, at least I finish fights. And uh, so, I mean, this is a solid main event for VUC's debut in Denmark. Uh, not as big of a fight, obviously, as it would have been against Kelvin Gastelum. But, I mean, I think the Danish fans, were, they should, they'll probably still be mostly happy about this. I think there's going to be a lot of good fights that will be announced also in the coming days and uh, weeks leading up to a fight. But, so, yeah, that's my take on it. I do think that uh, Hermansson beats Kanonier. Uh, and I think he, he does it either by a convincing decision, a la Jacare Souza, or in the later rounds, probably like 4th or 5th. Then... What else have we got? Alright, so 
I'm not gonna break down the fights for UFC 239, but I will, however, tip you guys off on a little thing. Our our, our sponsor, Umbet, actually laid down a pretty solid offer, which I think would be well worth taking. Uh, bet $5 on John Jones beating Thiago Silva, uh, sorry, Thiago Santos, and you win 25. So you win five times the money uh, on that bet. So uh, I personally, I think John Jones wins that fight. Most people do. Uh, does Santos have a puncher's chance? Oh, of course, and he, he if anyone, has a solid puncher's chance. But uh, overall, I would say, uh, if, if you guys believe in John Jones, if you're tip, picking him to win this, I say go for it. Um, so we're just going to end on a, an interesting little caveat here. It's, I mean, not huge news because it's not a huge fighter. Well, physically, he's pretty huge. Uh, Arjan Bular, uh, he was the first Indian heritage fighter to fight in, uh, to fight in the UFC. Uh, his last fight, he de defeated uh, Juan Adams via decision. And uh, that was the last fight in his UFC contract. And lo and behold, Instead of re-signing with the UFC, he has actually opted to sign with one championship. Which is a great move for one championship. Because this is exactly the kind of like athlete signing that they it will really help them out. I mean, I don't know the numbers, but I'm pretty sure that you know they can beat the UFC's offer without you know going bankrupt themselves. However, Bular now he's got a bigger name because he's been in the UFC and he's got that Indian heritage and breaking into the Indian MMA market is like breaking into India and China are the two markets where, you know, there's just out of in terms of sheer numbers, just so many opportunities. Uh, and obviously the UFC, they will be holding uh, Jessica Andrade's first uh, title defense in, in China. And we've seen that uh, the One, One Heroes uh, uh, sort of division uh, of One Championship, a lot of that is focused on China. So they're obviously also trying to build up a lot of Chinese talent, which is a very smart move. They haven't, I mean, they've got a couple of Chinese and Indian fighters in their, in their roster, of course. But they haven't necessarily got that big star yet. Uh, and I think this is a great move. I would not be too surprised if one championship uh, hold an event in India in the not too distant future. Maybe not this year, probably next year. But uh, this, yeah, the way I see it, maybe even a heavyweight title fight between Brandon Vera and Arjan Bular. There we got something interesting. There we got something you could headline a one championship event in India with. And they're making the right moves, honestly. I mean, I know that a lot of people kind of like gave them flack for like, oh, the, the investments aren't paying off. You know, Eddie Alvarez got knocked out. Sage North got, got knocked out. And yeah, I mean, you can look at it that way. But then at the same time, the, w the way I see it, you can also look at it the other way, that they've strengthened their brand. Because, you know, everyone sees the UFC as the best, and, you know, rightfully so. I mean, they do have the largest amount of top-tier athletes. But then at the same time, we see that these top-tier athletes don't always do super well in other organizations. Benson Henderson, who was the cons consensus best lightweight in the world for a long time. He's had a shaky run in Bellator. Demetrius Johnson, even though he won his one championship debut, it did not come easily. He had a lot of adversity that he had to fight through in order to get there. Uh, Timofey Nastyukin knocked out Eddie Alvarez. And uh, of course, Sage Northcutt got several bone breaks in his face from a brutal knockout that uh, most people did not see coming. In hindsight, we should have given Cosmo Alexandre a bit more credit, but uh, yeah, it was hard not to get wrapped. I, I mean, there's something about Sage Northcutt, you know, you d it's just, it's hard not to get like wrapped up behind him in some way. But so all, all one championship have done now is basically say like, hey, look, we'll take the top UFC stars, we'll bring them over here and our guys will still beat most of them. Uh, and that says a lot, you know, that builds up their own brand quite a bit, in my opinion. And this is another great fight. I mean, win or lose. I mean, let's just now play with the idea that he gets an immediate title shot. Uh, even if he doesn't, I mean, he'll probably get a mostly favorable matchup, the way I see it. And then if he wins, that probably get a title shot. 
win or lose, I say it's a good investment. I mean, if he wins, then they've got a star that they can use for the Indian market. If he loses, well, I mean, then they once again just prove that their brand is strong enough against top tier competition from the UFC. So, hats off to one championship. I see you guys are making the right moves. It's smart, and I look forward to seeing uh, to seeing Bular fighting in one championship. So yeah, that about round stuff off for this uh, Thursday episode of MMA Net Real Talk. I've been your host, Sebastian Mena Martinez. And as always, you guys should let me know what you think about the topics we've talked about in the comments below. Uh, it's always interesting to see what kind of perspectives you guys have on stuff. And uh, yeah, by all means, keep the comments coming. Uh, but yeah, uh, this rounds off this episode and we will catch you guys tomorrow.